Welcome back, and yes, it's that time again for the Duck of the Week Award. And this week, it goes to another St. Joseph's player. They found it hard last week making runs. Congratulations to Damien Foster for making a duck and joining the meritorious Duck Award Club and in line for an opening batting position in the Duck of the Year Award team at the end of the season. Looking at St. Joseph's, uh, Timmy Mitchell, St. Joseph's 6 for 177 at compulsory closure. Uh, sitting on top of the ladder, Daniel Fanning taking, uh, it, making uh, 66, taking his total to 627 runs for the season. He's not the leading wicket taker though. Coming up against Christopher John Bambridge, charges out at Lara. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Graeme, saying that they did do it pretty hard last week, St. Joseph's, so obviously around the turf. Uh, pitches, it wasn't easy going for the batsmen. We saw that in both GCA Division 1 and GCA Division 2, but they toiled harder. Daniel Fanning and the boys, and obviously Daniel batted pretty well to get 60 last week in pretty trying conditions. So with 180 on the board, a lot's going to depend on the conditions, I think, today. Do, do they go out there and it's a similar pitch to last week out at Lara? Are we going to see the pitch that we've seen for most of the season where run scoring's been pretty easy? If, if it is uh, has, as it has been for most of the season, then I think the Cats will get the points in this one. It's really going to open up that top six if they do as well. Uh, Mr. Dan Fanning was 66, uh, making his, uh, taking his total of 627. Uh, Justin, what do you reckon? St. Joey's uh, hold on to top position? Uh, yeah, they've got some good players there. There's no reason why they can't. Um, yeah, I reckon they'll be a good chance too. East Belmont resume a 2 for 51 on the charge in fourth position against Manifold Heights, who are all out for 91. Looks like comfortable first in his points for the East Belmont boys. Yeah, you can sum this one up in two words almost, Graham. East Belmont, they're going to win it very easily, and I wouldn't be surprised if the way Manifold batted last week, they even dreamed about an outright result to really cement themselves inside that top six with a round to go. Hall and Ferguson will resume as the not out batsman for North Geelong at 2 for 31, chasing Bell Post's total of 9 for 147. I'll throw the, this one to you, Justin. Do you reckon the North Geelong Magpies, now that Elf Clark's broken the record, can they continue their charge toward a finals chance? Oh, look, my old mate Trav Forkhead down there with the ball could uh, hopefully do some damage, but Fergie, class batter. Um, Going to be a tight one, but I'll go with North Geelong in that. Tim? Yeah, it was an inter interesting decision made by uh, Richie Hassett to declare Bell Post Hills innings, obviously searching potentially for outright points that are getting back into the race for the six, but I think... It's almost, we're going to more than likely see North Geelong get those runs. There's too much class in their batting lineup, and they bat fairly deep as well. So I think they'll knock that off, get six points, and depending on other results, maybe play themselves back into contention for finals. The two Blues, Newtown and Chewell, to face a challenge of 248 runs against Grovedale. Congratulations to the DJ, DJ Jive Turkey. Yes, Gareth Haberley. Well done, Nudge, making 28 for the Grovedale Tigers. But the Grovedale Tigers should win this one, Tim. Yeah, I think they'll do it pretty easily. And there were some pleasing signs last week for Grovedale as well with the, both the Calsons playing themselves back into form with the bat getting their highest totals for the year. So everything looking good for Barry Cheetis and the boys if they can uh, continue that form into finals and hopefully sew up at least a top three berth. Obviously knocked off top spot last weekend, but I think Barry and the boys will do it pretty easily against uh, Newtown there. And what is a very, very important game for Geelong West and South Bowen. South Bowen resume a two for 41, chasing Geelong West total of 204 and the interesting thing here Justin Brett Anderton last week took the best bowling pickers 16 overs five maidens five for 56 in GCA division one first yeah he's a quality player Brett Anderton uh, played a few games with him, him too over the years uh, look I reckon runs on the board are always a big thing so I'm probably going to go with Geelong West in that one yeah, I'll stick with uh, Geelong West as well, Rollo. I think the two wickets they claimed overnight really put them in good stead. Obviously, uh, have, have got a couple of the important batsmen out there. And I think both the Fords from South Barwon, so uh, two key figures there. And I think with that little bit of uh, confidence and a little bit of momentum, Geelong West can roll South Barwon for under 204. Go the Geelong West Rams. They are on the charge to pre uh, protect their reigning premiership honours from last season. And in the final game, well, Leopold last week out at Memorial Park were washed out because of the inclement weather that went around the outskirts of Geelong. And they'll be taking on a one-day fixture against Geelong City. So good luck to both of those sides. Looking at Division 2 in the Geelong Cricket Association, the first 11, Thompson lead the charge uh, on top of the ladder with 63 points. They're unbeaten at this stage of the season. But they are a 9 for 117, taking on North Shore, who are sitting in 7th position, hopeful of a top 6 
and they were all out for 76. So the Tommy Tigers have got this wrapped up on the first innings. I suppose the big question is, Tim, will they uh, go for the big outright points or be sat and will Adrian Saltola Makia be happy enough to work out for first innings? No, I spoke to Adrian after last week and he seemed pretty content with the six points. He was saying that they'll go out there and just do everything that they have been playing some positive cricket, obviously, to uh, have won all their games so far this season, but they'll just let things fly. If they do end up uh, playing well enough to roll North Shore again and get outright points, then so be it. But because they played themselves into such a comfortable position, Thompson really don't have to go for that outright. And I think it's something that we're seeing with uh, Justin's boys as well. They've uh, two sides that have really played themselves into comfortable positions and can almost uh, have their destiny in their own hands now for the rest of the season. Your thoughts, Justin, because maybe this time next year you'll be playing Thompson. Uh, look, yeah, they're obviously a quality uh, team down there at Thompson with uh, Ben Smiljanic there doing well. Um, yeah, I reckon if it was me, I'd just play the game out, get the runs and uh, give the batters a good hit. If there's no reason to get an outright, uh, I'd probably just, yeah, keep going. And Ace O'Hara, I should have reconsidered that particular uh, sub topic I just mentioned because Thompson could very well find themselves in Geelong Cricket Association Division 1 next season depending upon the GCA assessment criteria process uh, sitting on top of the ladder. Let's have a quick look at GCA Division 3 first 11 cricket and uh, in that particular uh, section well Corio Bay Sports Club sitting in 6th position they were 9 for 27 and finished up all out for 77 in their game against uh, the Teesdale Tadpoles who resumed today at 6 for 146. Tim, should be comfortable for Teasdale. Yeah, well, they've obviously already wrapped up the six points, Teasdale, and I think they're a side that might dream about now, right? They're sitting pretty comfortably in second position, though. So in a similar position, as we said, to both uh, St. Albans and Thompson, where they can really just kick back and, I think, take the six points from this one and be content with that. And in the final game, of course, the all-important game that our special guest this morning is uh, playing in St. Albans Breakwater. You posted 227 last week, Justin. Uh, Winchelsea, do you see them as a chance of running them down? Ah, uh, look, they're every chance of running them down. They're um, obviously in some good form. They've won some games. I think they beat Teesdale uh, quite recently. So we know it's going to be a tough challenge out there down at Winchelsea. And uh, we're just going to give it our best shot. I, th I think we've got the bowling attack to uh, come home with the points, though. Tim, your views? Yeah, I think St Albans, obviously in fantastic touch, having not lost a game. And while Matthew Partridge has given Winchelsea a, a chance in that game, I think uh, on a fairly big outfield and a, a fairly uh, slow outfield as well, I think if Justin and the boys can grab a couple early wickets and they'll set themselves on the way to a, a pretty easy win. A full roundup of Geelong Cricket here on the Geelong Cricket Show this morning. Hope you've enjoyed the program. Our thanks to our very special guest, Justin Miller, this morning. All the very best for the rest of the season, and particularly the finals, Justin. Thanks very much, Rollo. And to Tim Mitchell, enjoy your game at Bowen Heads this afternoon. Go the headers. Yeah, certainly. Uh, hopefully we'll be set on the way to a victory, Graham. Enjoy your cricket wherever it may be. Until next week, Wallow saying, catch ya.